I'm Chancellor Holden Thorpe. Joining me today is Lewis Black, Carolina class of 1970. An award-winning comedian, author, and actor, Lewis has appeared on Comedy Central's The Daily Show since 1996, and he has written and starred in a string of HBO and Comedy Central specials. Now you know me. I'm not the kind of person who gets worked up over just anything. Why is this chair so damned uncomfortable? He's written two best-selling books, appeared in movies and other television shows, and written more than 40 plays. For the past several years, Lewis has hosted the Carolina Comedy Festival, an event he helped create here at Carolina. In addition to performances, the festival provides workshops and lectures for budding comics, writers, and performers. Lewis was kind enough to join me today for an interview at the end of the most recent festival. Lewis, welcome to Chapel Hill. Thank you, Holden. Thanks a lot. Lewis, stand-up comedy strikes me as the hardest art form in the world. You have to, it's how you deliver it is important, and just trying to figure out what, what makes people laugh seems uh, so challenging to those of us who try to do it, uh, not always successfully. What, what, tell me about how, how stand-up comedy is as an art form. It's a tough uh, art form to learn. Um, having been in theater, though, I mean, theater is just is is painful in many ways. I mean, in terms of survival, uh, but you, but you have a group with you, which which helps. The 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 thing that's tough with stand up is when you're first learning how to do it. Unless you're a natural, and there's so few of them that are around at all that you just you go up and take your lumps. I mean, it's the only the only the the. The thing that's interesting, I mean, the, the both theater and, and, and stand-up have is, is that really where you learn is by failure, which is just a, which is really not the, it's not the most fun way to learn right. something, but it really is. I mean, it's, it's funny. I mean, I've worked with kids and even who, who are, you know, learning stand-up and stuff, and I've done it myself, and you find that no matter what, you, you know, you do it, and it went really great, and then you try to go back the next night and replicate it, and no. But when you do something that's really wrong, and then you fix it, it's it, that's easier. It's really uh, it, it's 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 tough in that way. Yeah, you know, I'm a scientist, and science is the same thing. We do things, and they don't work, and we fix them. And 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 one of the things that I'm struck with that I try to impress on our students all the time is exactly what you just said that doing something that doesn't work and fixing it is the is is the highest form of creativity. Well, that's where you learn. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean that's the that's what keeps you coming back mm -hmm. for what for whatever your discipline is. Yeah. Seriously, I mean if if once you lose that sense of I'm learning something and uh, and you've got it all down and then it's time to go on to something else. Yeah. And and one of the things I think we've learned at Carolina is how to be proactive on behalf of students and let students do what they want. You, you told me a story the other night about when you first came to Chapel Hill and you were trying to decide uh, whether you could do what you wanted to here and, and you had a great exchange with one of our administrators, it sounds like. Yeah, no, we, uh, the, the, um, I, I basically uh, had found in the, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to write plays. One of the reasons I came here was is they actually had, they, they taught playwriting to undergrads. And, but I discovered that you could actually major, you know, kind of, if you were taking, if, if you were going to be in theater, you could actually, you're, you're, uh, you could major within theater in playwriting. And, mm -hmm. and, and I, they didn't really know it, and I had to show them in the book. <laughs> yeah. But we like it when that kind of thing happens around here. Well, it was yeah. good. It was good for them. It was funny because there weren't any. There hadn't been any uh, really undergraduate uh, playwrights at that point, and, and all the guys who were, in that playwriting uh, program, at that point, were uh, were taking the courses were graduate students. Mm -hmm. So and so, how how is translating playwriting into stand up comedy? How, how did that how well, did that translate? Well, what what well playwriting? What happened was is that uh, uh, if you write plays, it, it, you know, you you know you 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 try to get them done and. Uh, and you can send them out to a million theaters. You're lucky if you get one play done. If you get one play done a year, or especially early on, if you get anything done, you're lucky. And I and I, I had an interest in stand up from. Uh, I, I watched it a lot as a kid. It fascinated me. I was kind of fascinated by it. 
And it became like a hobby, which is a weird hobby to have. But I wasn't like a stamp collector, and I wasn't. There was I, I didn't have baseball cards. So this, and I kind of, and I, so I, uh, uh, it, it reached a point. It was actually down here where um, uh, I had um, this place called Cat's Cradle, which has been here for forever. Was it really opened this one summer, and my friends had a band, and they said, "Why don't you come in and do try, you know, try your hand at it?" And and it was in a fairly safe environment because it was all these friends of mine. And I started doing it for fun just to see. It, it, it was, the idea was it was fun. It was painful. It was just painful. I was miserable. I, can't, I, uh, I actually have a, a cassette of my, uh, you know, the, a recording of my first uh, stand up here. And I can't, I can't listen. I, can, I hear eight seconds of it and it just brings it. It's like bad. It's uh, I just, I can't listen to it at all. And so, uh, um, as it, it, once I left here, I, I, I really kind of discovered it was gay. what what stand up did was I could write stuff, and get it done. So really, it was an excuse for me to get my writing on stage. It really, uh, I and it, it, the thing was is, I I, I felt like if I, if I could find somebody to better to do it, I would do it, you know find somebody else. But it was kind of like my comedy. So it was I was doing it, but I was. I was a, I was terrible at delivering it, but but it really allowed me to to work on writing while I was uh, waiting for the you know somebody to do a play somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know you 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 live in Chapel Hill part of the time now. Yeah. I do. Uh, wh what do you do when you're here? I, uh, I, I, I come down here to write and. Uh, I come down here to gain weight. I think. <laughs> I if up. you live on Franklin Street, I do. That, I yeah, walk up to the. It's a hazardous. I kind of do. Kind of. I find that I have to say I can only go. I can go to the E.O. Waffle Shop once a week. <laughs> um, there are just certain places I can do this. This is my diet. Uh, I wander around. Uh, you know, it's beautiful here. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm, I've always been really uh, comfortable here, and um, so I wander around. Uh, Especially the old campus, I'll go and just sit there, and um, I, I just and I get to do some reading here. It's quiet. It's mm -hmm. nice. Even even when the even when the students are around, it was. It's always been a place that has not been, um, you know, uh, nutty. I mean, in the sense that mm -hmm. there's even even with the students around, there's outside of, you know, the f late Friday basketball games, etc. It's if it's if it's tranquil, and I'm not a tranquil person. As you know, as you well yeah. know. And so, do you need tranquility in order to to write? Is that part of what, well, how you get here? And, I mean, and I think too the <clears throat> I think the reason I I, I kind of I always knew I was going to come back here. Um, mm -hmm. I always sensed that I would uh, come back to Chapel Hill. I, it was part of the deal I had with myself because I really wanted to stay. But I knew if I stayed, I wouldn't get anything mm -hmm. done. <laughs> I'd right. just kind of hang out here. I would just be hanging out for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. So I said, if I leave, I'm, I can come back. And uh, what? It, uh, and it's the place that I started writing. And um, and so I think that that, that really. Uh, and I've always been comfortable writing here. So I think the fact that I was reinforced as a writer here that's part of the reason that I've I kind of come back too. And I. And I like to be around. Um, yeah, I think it's important to be, and as you probably know too, it's important to be around uh, a community like this, and 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 it's important to be around uh, kids. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, I can't think of anything we'd uh, rather have people say about Chapel Hill than it's a place where they can be creative and a place where they can think about things, and it's a place where they want to come back to, and it's an environment where new ideas are are, are cherished and and where you can try things and fail. So. Yeah. Uh, we sure appreciate the fact that you're back here, and thanks for taking the time to talk to us today. I got nothing but time. We can do this again anytime you <laughs> okay. want. Thanks, Lucas. <laughs>